lovers and welcome to another one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings and today a new Belgian whiskey. Now I'm sure you know that there is already quite a bit of uh, Belgian whiskey around. There is for example the, uh, the, the Saint Graal, the Wild Weasel, there's the, the, the Golden Carolus, but there's also Goldlees uh, which is rather famous by few years and of course there's the Belgian Al. But now there is a new one, this one, Campis Vu, which translates into Campine Fire. But uh, it is a single cask that yielded only 300 bottles of 50 centiliters, as you can see. And uh, once you realize that it was actually a Lefroy quarter cask on which this new Belgian single malt matured, then of course you will know that it is peaty stuff. Now I know what you were thinking, Mark, you need both a shave and a haircut, and you're right, but first things first. Let me tell you a little bit about this new distillery, which is called Pirlo Distillery. It was basically a, a startup. Uh, brewery uh, and he below the, the man behind the below distillery he he has been brewing beer since all oh, the 1980s in his mom's kitchen and then he started brewing for for the public so the campus food beers are quite famous and they have some some very nice names as well uh, there's a few in the picture that you see here like hopper god and uh, and Haverstadt and, and beers like that so high alcohol content beer very good beer um, but uh, when he started his own distillery uh, or his brewery in 2011, he finally convinced uh, the banks to join him in his, in, in his adventure. He found a location in Zandhoven in the Kempen, which is a region in the north of Belgium, which reaches all the way from Antwerp to uh, Mazek on the, on the Dutch border and even a bit into, the, uh, into uh, southern Holland actually. Uh, that region, the Kempen, uh, that's where he has his distillery, his brewery since 2011. Now once he started brewing um, uh, his own beer, he immediately also distilled uh, a spirit as well and he put that to sleep on these uh, uh, quarter casks that he obtained from Lefroy. He's got 15, um, 14 are still silently maturing, but uh, the first one, batch number one, has now been uh, bottled as a three-year-old, so it's very young whiskey. And Kempis Food, as it says here, it's a single cask, it's one Lefroyke quarter cask. The whiskey is only three years old, so it is matured on Lefroyke quarter casks and it is bottled in uh, small bottles of 50 centiliter. And it was only bottled on the 21st of March 2016, so this is really brand new and I haven't opened it yet. And I've just been told that the first batch of 300 bottles is already sold out. Amazing, isn't it? I've got bottle number 98 and 99. Oh, how, how I would have liked to have bottle number 100. Wouldn't that have been nice? Anyway, bottle at 46% ABV. Let me tell you again, Kempis Vu translates into Campine Fire because the Kempa, the region which is famous for its heavy fields, its fruit, its industry, um, basically the Kempa takes its name from the Latin word Campina, which means open field. Even in Roman times, the, uh, the area was called Toxandria. But enough of the uh, history lesson already, let's get to work on this new single malt. It's a bit exciting because I have not yet tried it, as you can see, we're just opening up this bottle. Campis Vuur. It looks a bit like, a, uh, like an aftershave bottle, wouldn't you say? A perfume bottle, which is a bit, a bit, can I say that? A bit feminine for this sturdy single malt. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, at the end of 2012, like I said, he put to sleep 15 quarter casks that he got from Lefroy. So we are expecting a bit of a peaty whiskey here. Let's see. So, it's got this beautiful amber color, yeah, old gold to amber. And it takes a while for the drops to, to come back down the glass. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's got beautiful thick drops. So I'm guessing this is going to be uh, uh, with, with a high viscosity, a, a rather full bodied malt. This is really exciting, isn't it? Ah, here we go. Now again, this is this is this is a first timer for Belgium. This is this is quite exciting because this is the first single cask peated whiskey that Belgium uh, Belgium has ever produced. There we go. Bottled at a drinking strength of forty six percent ABV on the nose. Well, I get some sweet malt and some white fruit, and I have to say the. The smokiness on the nose is rather subdued, it's in the background, it's not in your face at all. To be honest, I, I, I had expected a little bit more. Nevertheless, it's quite nice. The white fruit slowly evolves. I get some agrooms now, I get some, some orange peel. It's rather evolving towards citrusy notes. 
And it gives me the feeling actually that this, this, this reminds me a bit of a wine finished malt. How weird. But then again, there's also some sweet and sour in there, and I even have a touch of plasticine, you know, plasticine, Play Doh. The smokiness is really soft. And there's even a hint of a stable, you know, where, where you keep horses or cows or maybe even goats. Having said that though, that's not a laugh note at all. This nose is quite appealing on the palate then. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah, baby. Now, oh yeah, this is, wow. Wow, this is, uh, whoa, what a lovely surprise. The smokiness now develops immediately from the get-go. It's very round and creamy in your mouth. This is a full-bodied malt, nicely layered. Immediately the big smokiness uh, develops and, and this is unmistakably uh, uh, peaty whiskey. And, and you can even recognize the typical sootiness of, of Lefroig in here. I get, again, sweet versus salt in this case, with some soot in the middle. It's a bit dirty, in fact, on the back of the throat. Mm -mm. Yes, this is quite exciting, and it's, it's actually quite layered, it's quite mature. Wow, this is only three years old, and it does not have any new makey traits in there. Uh, there's not any pear drops or anything like that, uh, not too many tannins even. It's not, it's not neither cloying nor drying, it's really nicely balanced. Wow, this is impressive. All right, let's give this, uh, let's give this uh, another go on, on, on the finish. That finish is, is long and smoky and sweet. Wow, this is good. It fades very gently and at the end you get this soft, salty uprising at the death. Wow, this doesn't happen often, but this time I'm really I'm flabbergasted. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's really, if you were to put this in a lineup, taste it blind, people would tell you, wow, this is a, this is a very nice, Lafroigi whiskey, maybe even some Kalila, something like that. This is this is big, peaty, smoky, but very sweet and fruity as well. This is really impressive. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is only only three years old. A bold statement, but I think this is probably the most impressive Belgian single malt I've tasted so far. Sorry, no offense to all the Belgian whiskey producers because they're good, but. But this is, wow, what an entrance, what an entrance, Campines Fire, woo, Campines Fire, well done. Uh, now I've been told that the first cask has already been uh, bottled and is sold out, but I have it from a good source that the second cask will be bottled very soon. One thing's for sure, I'm getting me another one of these. This is, this is simply, wow, I'm not easily lost uh, at a loss for words, but this is quite impressive. Quite impressive. This is really, this is something else. This is something else. Uh, now, I'm sure that much of the character of this whiskey is formed by the Lafroy cask, certainly, but there is an unmistakable, very good Numic spirit in there. Unmistakably, this is very good spirit. Period. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one impressive Belgian single malt. And that's all for this whiskey rambling, and I hope to see you again at one of Mark's whiskey ramblings real soon. And until then, May the malt be with you.